ambassador to Cuba, George Hollingbury. He is a celebrated cheesemaker, Richard Hollingbury, and I'm delighted to welcome him. A very good morning, good afternoon to you, sir. And there you are in all of your glory. We tried to do this before, and we had a few hiccups, but I'm glad that all is well now. Um, you and your Godminster cheese are based in the West Country. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But you grew up in the North, and childhood was also about business. Your dad founded Comet Warehouses, so entrepreneurialism, business in the blood. Well, I would hope so. Um, certainly my father gave me some very simple tips along the way. Um, I think one of the best one was a third hard work, a third good luck and a third good timing, which is the one I remember as a standout. Absolutely. And, and as a result of the, the family sold Comet and made some money. Uh, but you are not just a rich lad who had a good chance. You're academically qualified as a farmer. You know about this business and you've worked very hard to make it work. But why did you choose cheese and arable farming? Well, when uh, at the time I was at uh, uh, college, dairy farming was in a very, very good state um, with quotas. So that was all the talk at the time. And uh, I had been to university down in Exeter in the West Country, absolutely fell in love with it. And so dairy farming, or at least a mixed dairy farm, seemed, seemed the right option to me. And, and what's doubly clever, Richard, is that, and you explained this to me when we chatted the other day, uh, that the farm is still at the heart of the business, but the actual cheese manufacturing, you've now, as it were, sublet, that's probably the wrong word, but, but people make it under your brand for you, and you're the distributor, but you still run the farm. That's correct. And actually, when we started, <coughs> excuse me, the first batch of cheese we made was only with our milk and just due to the nature of the dairy business, you know, um, scale is all important these days. So very quickly it became one part to four and then it's been diluted from there. But we had the brand, we have the recipe. Uh, we certainly have our own milk, which we're very proud of. And uh, in fact, about nearly half of it is sold uh, locally in bottles as, as liquid milk. Uh, and it's very popular. I think the people that sell it for us sell, I think they have 276 outlets. So it's a great milk in its own right. And again, I was always told, if you're gonna be a farmer uh, and you're not gonna be a huge player, then it's got to be a product, not a commodity. So that's why we decided to do the government's to cheddar. Yeah, and absolutely environmentally a product and making sure that it's done in the right way and that standards are met. Is that easy to do when you get somebody else to make your cheese according to your recipe uh, and your rules? No, not really. Um, the process of cheese making itself is, is basically exactly the same. Um, it's what comes before that that's so important. As you, as you know, and as we've spoken about, um, what was always passionate for me is doing the organic farming. I, I studied geology and geography at university. So I've always, and also because I didn't, didn't have a farming background, I've always thought um, I've, I've sort of approached it in a more sort of ecological way rather than scientific way. So, um, as I say, the, for me, it's as much as look, uh, looking after the ecosystem and the ecology of what we're doing here, because as we all know, biodiversity is going down and so on and so forth. So if we can come up with a system that, uh, that obviously makes a good product for, you know, and again, we're, we're only 60 percent self-sufficient in food in this country. So if we can make a product that's very good and hopefully we're doing our bit for the environment at the same time, then, then that's a tick tick for me.